and welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is Bree, also known as highcheeks.c.mua. And for today's look, we're actually going to be taking it back to basics. I had a girlfriend of mine um, reach out to me on Instagram and she was asking me, or actually she was like, hey, I saw one of your videos and I love the way you do makeup. I wish I could do makeup, I just don't know where to start. And I was like, this is perfect, I love that. So this is, again, taking it right back down to basics. It's going to teach you the basic core four, I love to say, core four values of what you need to do any application, whether you're going extreme and doing very avant-garde looks or whether you're going very natural or subtle, or even if you're doing something like this, which is more of a balance between a natural but smoky look, the core four are the things you're going to need to do and to achieve this look. Um, the core four are going to be your primer, your foundation, your concealer, and your setting powder or setting spray, whichever one you prefer of that alternative fourth um, option. I'll go into further detail in this video, so please enjoy. This video is dedicated to my friend who requested and asked um, pretty much hey what do i do where do i start as well as to all the women who enjoy doing makeup but don't quite know where to start so i hope that you guys enjoy also do not forget to like subscribe and hit the bell at the bottom of this tutorial so that way you will be notified when i upload new videos thank you so much and till next time so first things first i'm gonna pin back my hair <clears throat> Here, right here. So we don't want to get makeup on it. No, no, no. That'll be no point at all. So now that that's pinned back, we're gonna go ahead and prime our face. We're gonna be using the Fenty Pro Filter Primer. What a primer is and what it does, it just like the name states, it primes your face. Think of it like when you're painting a wall. You always want to prime the wall before you put on your paint because it allows the paint to last longer. That way you don't have peeling or anything of that nature. So that's the same thing when it comes to priming your face. It allows your makeup to last longer, no peeling, and it also allows the makeup to just wear well on your skin. I also like to explain that primer is like a barrier between your face and the actual makeup. Because if you are doing a good skincare routine and you're prepping your face for makeup, but you're not actually taking the time to prime it, it won't do you any good to do all of those steps to cleanse your skin and get it prepped for makeup and you don't have a barrier. Because keep in mind that makeup foundation still have different types of chemicals in it and types of ingredients that can affect or irritate your skin. So that's why you want to put a barrier between your face or your skin and the actual um, makeup. Now when it comes to primers, you also want to take into account what type of primer you're using. Like if you've seen a few of my other videos before, then you know that I've mentioned excessively that I have extremely oily skin. So I don't tend to go towards primers that are very hydrating or things that are too illuminating because I know that in the grand scheme of things, my skin is gonna have a little bit of illumination and it's gonna have a little of hydration because I do have overly oily skin. So I tend to go for primers that are a little bit more mattifying, that has like a drying factor to it. Um, some of the ones that I prefer, as you saw, I use the Fenty Pro Filter. I do like that with my foundations. It works well with any foundations that I personally use. And I also like to use Cover Effects. Cover Effects is a really good primer and a good product for people who even have very sensitive skin. They do have primers out there for that as well. Um, the one that I usually use is either the mattifying um, brand, or excuse me, the mattifying one, or I like to use the new one, which is a gripping one, which helps to grip my makeup. Now on the other scale of things, if you have more drying skin, or if you have combination where it's dry, normal skin, or even if you have certain areas of your face that's not necessarily oily, or they're not necessarily um, too drying, Certain primers that would work best for those type of skin types or um, Smashbox, 
that's a really good primer that's on the market. Um, things that are not overly drying or mattifying, I would definitely steer away from if you are a little bit drier, like something that's hydrating like Tarte has a primer that's called Quench and it does hydrate your skin. Or even if you wanted to, you could also use Pro Filter, which is actually quite universal. The Pro Filter by Fenty. Those are some of the ones that I would suggest if you have a little bit more drying skin. You want something that hydrates your skin because if you use something mattifying, obviously putting dry on dry, your makeup's not gonna set, sit well on your skin. And again, if you have more oily skin, I wouldn't necessarily suggest something that's too hydrating because it might just allow the makeup to slide right off. Um, yeah, so when you're prepping your skin, you wanna, again, use a good primer. And think of it, again, even when you're doing your nails. When you're doing your nails, you always have a base coat. Primer is like your base coat. Now we're gonna go in with our color, which is our foundation. Foundations, there are also a range of foundations. There are full coverage, there's medium coverage, there's a light coverage, um, like the sheer coverage type of foundation. It all is in your preference. Um, so I'm going to be using the Fenty uh, foundation in shade four, 430, which is my shade, until 435 comes out. I'm still waiting. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on the back of my hand. And I'm just gonna put dots all over. I like to do my little Dalmatian dots. I'm gonna put that all over. There's no rhyme or reason. You could put your foundation on however you prefer. I just like to do my dots. It's just my thing. But going back to foundations, like I mentioned before, there are different types of coverages. There's different types of formulas of uh, foundation. You could do something that's very light and sheer that gives you still like nice natural um, finish. That goes a lot longer for people who prefer or who are just dabbling into foundations and they're not too comfortable wearing something that's like mattifying, which tends to be a little bit more full coverage. Not all foundations that are full coverage are mattifying, but a good portion of them um, are. So if you're just, you know, getting starting into makeup, you wouldn't necessarily want to go in perhaps with something too full coverage because it could be too bold or too heavy on your skin. I would say do things in moderation. So say you want to have a step up. Say you your routine was normally like a BB or CC cream, which gives you the lightest amount of coverage, but you still fill your skin, skin with it. You can step it up and go for something that's a little bit more sheerer, where it has the the coverage of a foundation, which is a step up from a BB cream and a CC cream, but it also still has that lightweight character about it, like a BB or CC cream. It's a nice balance. So you can definitely do that. One of the ones that I really like that gives you like a skin-like feel to it is gonna be the Sheer Glow from NARS is an amazing, lightweight formula foundation that gives you a good amount of coverage. It is still buildable. What I mean by buildable is, so say for instance, like I, I have my foundation on, and say I just wanna amp it up just a little bit more, you can put a little bit more on to give you a little bit more coverage. And that's what buildable in is. So anytime you see a foundation that's whether it's medium to buildable coverage or even sheer to buildable coverage. So on the scale from sheer to full, Sheer obviously is gonna be your lightest weight. Think of it like a, a tint on a nail polish. Then you got your medium coverage, which gives you a little bit of color, a little bit more color than obviously the sheer, but it's not bam in your face. Then you go to the grand scheme, which is the full coverage. Think of it like a black fingernail polish. If you, if you kind of collate it like that, it will be a good transition from okay makeup to whatever. And I'm just pressing and rolling. Now, I personally love using a beauty blender when I apply my foundations because I do tend to have more mattifying ones, which dry down a lot quicker and you have to work with it so quickly to get it into your skin. Now, of course, some people prefer to use brushes and it's all in your preference. However, I will say this, if you do 
prefer to use a beauty blender. When you're using a sheer cover foundation, it will defeat the purpose because it would actually, because it's already a sheer foundation and you have to damp your beauty blender to get the best payoff. And if you use a sheer foundation, you're not getting as much coverage as you would with the brush. Now, again, like I mentioned before, because I do personally have or prefer mattifying foundations, I can get away with this because again, most mattifying foundations, as soon as you put it on, you have to work with it as quickly as possible because it does dry, dry down quickly. Now, this one is the Fenty, and this was more of a demi matte, which is a nice balance where it doesn't dry down immediately as you put on your face, but it does still have that nice oil control factor into it. All right, now that I've applied my foundation, I'm going to go in with my concealer, which is the next um, important step in your process of my core four. Um, so what a concealer does is just as it name states as well, you're going to conceal. So any hyperpigmentation, any blemishes you have that you want to cover up, this is what a concealer does. It not only does that, but it also helps to brighten. So those days where you're actually putting on full face of foundation, you tend to go with a concealer that's like one or two shades lighter than you are because it um, uh, gives you that dimension back into your skin. Um, right now, like as you can see, I don't have on any concealer. I just have on the foundation, the primer and the foundation. But I wanna bring life and bring dimension back into my skin because if you just leave it at this one step, it's almost like you're missing something. So by applying a concealer, which is like one or two shades lighter than your own skin, it helps to give you again that dimension. However, on the flip side of it, side of it like I mentioned before, concealer helps to conceal. So say you're just trying to cover a blemish or hyperpigmentation, in those cases you can go with a concealer that is your skin tone and you just wanna press it out to blend it into your skin and allow for it to disappear into your skin. So like I mentioned before, I'm using the Born This Way uh, Multi-Use Full Coverage Concealer and this is in the shade Maple. And I'm just gonna put that underneath my eye and you can see how it is a shade brighter than I am, two shades brighter than I am. And that's what you want because once I blend it out, you'll see that I started to bring a little bit more depth back into my skin. And I also put it down the bridge of my nose. This is my like natural highlight for my nose because I don't necessarily contour my nose. I like the shape of my nose and I don't need, I don't pref I prefer not to narrow it more. I just use the concealer as a soft contour, if you will, without adding much more product to it. I also like to put it down here pretty much where the natural lighting of your, your skin is, I tend to put concealer in those areas. And I also like to put it above my mouth because I do have a little shadow. And mama doesn't want that shadow. And on the corners of my nose. So, I look crazy right now, but <laughs> we're, we're gonna blend that out. We're gonna press and roll, which is what I like to do. So, I'm gonna go ahead and press and roll that into my skin. But you see how it gave me a little bit more brightness? That's what you're looking for when you're using concealer. And blend it out, you wanna blend it out so that way it just looks as natural as possible. It doesn't look too different from other dimensions of your face. And I don't know if I mentioned before, I think I have in previous videos, but the reason why I prefer to use a press and roll method it's because, it's because it gives you more of that airbrush look. And I don't feel like I'm sweeping the product away from my face. Again, you can use whatever tool you prefer. You can use a concealer brush. You can use a beauty blender. I, most of the time, prefer to use a beauty blender because it allows me to take out two of, if not three, tools that I don't necessarily have to use. I don't have to use a separate foundation brush, like a separate concealer brush, or even a separate powder brush. This does it all for me. So it can be cost effective. 
Um, however, you do also have to sanitize your tools. I can't express that enough. I definitely re recommend when you do use a beauty blender to replace it every three months. But you see the brightness, you can kind of see from the side, you can still see the deepness of my foundation, but in the center, I have a little bit more brightness, a little bit more dimension. And that's what you want. You want to look awake. Like in those days when you have had no sleep, you want to definitely put forth as much effort as possible to make it look like you do have a good decent eight hours of sleep. So again, I'm pressing and rolling that into my skin. But you see my nose? Like you could see like I have like a natural contour without actually contouring. And that's what the concealer does. It gives me that soft contour without contouring. <laughs> I'm pressing and rolling. And this just brings a little bit more color, a little bit more life into your skin. And some things that I have seen is like, I've seen people actually use two shade contour or concealers. One again to help brighten, give dimension. And then they'll get like another concealer to use for contouring. I think that's cool. I think that's unique. If you wanted to do something like that, you could definitely do that. And my same rule of thumb is what would apply. You just go like a few shades darker than your own skin tone if you wanted to use it as a contour, a separate concealer for contouring. So now that I have my concealer on, I'm gonna go in and set my makeup. You can use whatever products you prefer to set your makeup. I personally prefer to use powders to set my makeup. Again, it helps to control my oils. It helps me to stay pretty matte all day. Um, I do use excessive powders because as I mentioned in my previous video, I use three setting powders to really set my makeup. It's all in your preference. If you don't need to go that far, you don't have to. And on this flip side of that, and when it comes to people who have a little bit more drier skin, would I necessarily recommend a powder? No, because it's drying. Um, however, there are certain hydrating powders that you could use to set your makeup, and you could definitely use one of those. Um, but most of the time, if you have a little bit more dry skin, I would set, suggest if you're going to powder, powder lightly, not as excessive as I have. And also, if you are going to do that, I would also recommend to seal everything with a setting spray. I don't norm normally use a setting spray myself because I tend to get shiny even with that. Even with my steps of using three powders, if I use a setting spray, I still get shiny and I don't necessarily want that. It is completely an option um, if you wanna use a setting spray or if you wanna use a setting powder, but I would definitely recommend to set your makeup. The setting powders are going to be your top coat, just like a setting spray will be considered like your top coat to your nail polish. So just keep that in mind. Well, with all of that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and use my soft light setting powder called Golden Hour by Becca. And I, like I mentioned before, I don't use this one to actually set my makeup. I use it more of an illuminating factor because it does have a little bit of a a nice soft lit tone to it. So as I put highlight on, it will just enhance that more. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in my top, bounce it around, and I'm just gonna press that in. Press that in on both sides of my face. Oh, and you know what, I, I, I think I only mentioned uh, as far as foundations, let me just go back a little bit. As far as foundations, Sheer Glow from NARS. Another good one that would work well for someone who's a little bit more hydrating would be something like Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. That's actually a really nice one. Or even Born This Way by Too Faced is a really nice foundation for someone who likes that nice natural look but doesn't want to go overboard and wear something too full coverage. And again, I'm pressing and rolling using my same little sponge, my little Nanette Lepore sponge. And honestly, you could just get away with this and you'll be fine. Like, 
after you set your makeup, if this is the nice natural look you wanna go for, knock yourself out. The great thing about makeup is you can play around with it. Like there's no rules outside of the core four that I mentioned before, which is the steps that I'm telling you about. But when it comes to, you know, how extreme or how subtle you want to be, there is no rules when it comes to things like that. Um, I just opened the cap to my Fenty, which is always my second powder that I prefer to use. As you can see, it does have a little tint. It's in the shade Hazelnut. Now this I do use to set underneath my eyes to help to the baking process, if you will. So I do use a little bit of that. I try not to put too much on because I don't want to be ashy. I do want that nice matte finish, but I don't want it to be ashy. So I, either I will do one side at a time or I'll just go all over and do both eyes at the same time. So I'm doing the other side and I press this one in. I don't let it sit or settle. I just go ahead and press it in because it gives me again that color. And I find that it gives me a good amount of brightness. Um, and again, that color that I'm looking for. I got some on my shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> and it helps again with the process of settling my makeup. And last but not least, my go-to, like my real baking powder is going to be my Laura Mercier translucent powder. This is my ride or die. I love this powder. Um, it is, as you can see, it's in like a, a white kind of tone. However, I don't use a lot of it. And because I've already allowed myself to settle with the colors from the Fenty, and I don't have to use a lot of it, is the strict purpose of this is to capture any fallout that I may have from the eyeshadows that I use, and to also just seal in everything to help me stay matte all day. So I'm gonna take a little bit. Now this one, I will allow to sit underneath my eyes because we are gonna play with eyeshadow. We're not gonna go crazy with it, but we are going to be using eyeshadows. And you don't wanna do all this work in it be for nothing. So just a little bit. And I like to go a little bit heavier on my nose too. I'm mainly the bridge of my nose and the tip of my nose is where I prefer to stay with the powder. And with this, I do put it in my chin, but I press it out. I don't let it sit like I do with my nose and with my under eye. And I don't go outside of my chin area because again, I've already got that color and I don't tend to sweat or get too oily around the out parameters of my face. 